There is so much good television these days, thanks to the proliferation of streaming services, the streaming wars, as we like to call them. And while Apple TV and HBO Max aren't particularly competitive, they have two shining crown jewels, which are just so incredible that they're able to, I would say, be on par and in some cases even outshine the bigger, more franchise-heavy stuff that the other streaming services are doing. I'm talking Ted Lasso and Hacks. I gotta give a shout out to Hacks. It's such an amazing show. It is the next Ted Lasso, but Ted Lasso is continuing. Season two is coming out uh, this coming Friday, July, uh, July 23rd. And you know, to watch Ted Lasso is to love Ted Lasso. And if you are a fan of Ted Lasso, it was incredible to watch what, unfo what unfolded in season one, that a show could not only be so good, but so consistently good. Every week they, they topped themselves. And it was just, you, you couldn't believe your eyes. And on that note, I think many of us were nervous who watched the show that there's no way they could duplicate that success with a season two. But I can't believe it. Season two is actually even better than season one because they just take the ball and run with it. It's incredible. But again, it's on Apple TV, which has proven to be a real hurdle for, well, a lot of people. So before I review Ted Lasso season two without spoilers, don't worry. First, I wanna make a, a case for you to subscribe to Apple TV Plus so you watch this show. I want Ted Lasso to be an even bigger success. I want the show to go on for multiple seasons. And for that to happen, people gotta watch it. it although winning all, this, all the awards that it's winning, I'm sure is also helping it. And you know, you're gonna need an Apple TV subscription for several months because Ted Lasso, just like season one, is a weekly release. Although season one released the first three episodes in one day, whereas this is just a straight weekly release, one episode at a time for eight weeks. Now, also the episodes to make things I think even more daunting for new, for new viewers is that they're just 30 minutes. But I wanna tell you that just like season one, and if you watch season one, you can back me up down below in the comments that this is true. For some reason, even though the episodes are only half an hour, they feel like they're like an hour to an hour and a half because there's so much happens. It's incredible. I mean, it's just, there's so much. It is an incredibly well spent 30 to 35 minutes. Although I did get to watch them all in a row. I was so spoiled. All right, so if you, if you subscribe today, you can, you can binge Ted Lasso season one if you missed it. And the show is, again, highly bingeable. I watched season two in 24 hours and I loved every second of it. It was so great. I watched it as fast as I possibly could. It's an amazing show. And you could technically wait the eight weeks to, uh, to binge it yourself, but uh, I don't know. I've watched other Apple shows weekly and it's, uh, it's good. I mean, I prefer to be able to binge it, but just watch it, trust me. You know, I think you're gonna wanna talk about it. Hopefully people will be talking about it. I don't know if a weekly release for a show that's on a service with not a lot of traction will trend. I mean, I'm nervous about it. It debuts the same day as Netflix's Masters of the Universe Part One. Believe me, that's gonna trend on uh, July 23rd. But after that, again, so that's the reason Ted Lasso maybe wouldn't wanna release all in one day like Masters of the Universe is. Maybe over the course of its eight weeks until like the dead of August, right? Ted Lasso could trend on Fridays. I mean, Marvel's What If Now, those shows are, Disney Plus's shows are on Wednesdays. So Ted Lasso has a real opportunity here and that would really help Apple TV Plus if it did trend. Uh, okay, so let's get, so you've got Ted Lasso season one to watch if you subscribe. Now, I also highly recommend Defending Jacob. That was an incredible show. The Mosquito Coast, which just aired. Love that show. Also, movies Greyhound and The Banker are excellent. You could, you could go back and watch those, even though they're, they're a little older. And then also, new series Mr. Corman, starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Well, that debuts August 6th, overlapping with Ted Lasso season two. So, you know, that I think should maybe make it worth your time and money. I mean, I know it's a lot of streaming services to subscribe to, but I really think that it, T Ted Lasso is worth it for the season two run. And you'll have all this other content you can get in there at the same time. And if you have any Apple originals that you highly recommend people watch, I know a lot of you are really pushing for all mankind, you know, sound off down below. All right, so let's talk Ted Lasso season two without spoilers. And wow, we can't talk about spoilers because I don't want to ruin the crazy amount of amazing things that happened this season. So maybe it can trend, but I don't know if it's really 
Well, the finale could probably trend. The, the finale is nuts. The season finale. Oh, wow. Now, one of the most interesting things about Ted Lasso season two, maybe this will get it trending, is that at points, season two gets surprisingly dark. I mean, comedians have always been very good at shifting to, to drama to the darker storylines. I mean, even look, Joker grappled with that as well. And it's very interesting though to see a comedy show do that. A show that on its, uh, you know, on its sleeve is so lighthearted, but then to see it like take these very dark turns. I was like, whoa, I'm surprised, but I'm loving it. And at the same time though, even though it gets dark, it doesn't lose that special spark of kindness and heart that have made the show so special. For instance, what they're doing with Nick Muhammad's Nathan Shelley is really dark and very sophisticated. And the way that it gradually happens over the course of the season is shocking. It's really, really well done. He's Emmy nominated already for season one. I think he, he's going to continue to be, maybe he'll, maybe he'll win, but I think I think he's going to continue to get nominated. That, I mean, that was just incredible what they did with his character. Uh, on that note, parents are a very big part of Ted Lasso season two, and the show explores them in some really interesting and unique ways. With again, real shockers in that season finale, episode eight. So many shockers in episode eight. Episode eight, they end this. They, they, once again, you're like, when is season three coming out? It's incredible. I also continue to really appreciate this show's view of masculinity. This is great. Here we have a modern depiction of men today who are more in touch with their feelings, but no less masculine for it. Ah, oh, that's so great. Every single guy in Ted Lasso is a snack and a legit catch. You throw a rock, you hit a dateable guy. It's incredible. Ted Lasso shows all different types of men from all different backgrounds coming together and benefiting from their differences instead of letting that divide them. Forget this picture of Utopia that people use on the internet all the time. They should show a picture of Ted Lasso because that's the world that I want to live in and I think many of many anyone who anyone who watches the show wants to live in that world too. The show also does a great job depicting women. Hannah Waddingham and Juno Temple have talked about how important it is for them that instead of their characters competing in a world that's largely men, they support each other. And it's just so great. You never see that depicted in Hollywood and you rarely see it in real life. So it's really nice to see that here. And they're both both leading ladies. I mean, you know, Hollywood always has that stereotype of the leading lady and then her, the best friend. And it's great that they're both leading ladies and they can be friends and they can support each other and not compete. It's fantastic. And season two adds another woman to the clubhouse, Sarah Niles is a sports psychologist. Now Niles' character is unlike any other on Ted Lasso and it takes him getting used to. But her arc also sneaks up on you, and by the end of season two, she's as valuable to the team as any other character. I love her. There's a reason that not just uh, Jason Sudeikis is nominated for an Emmy, but six of his supporting cast members as well. For season two, all these characters continue to shine, but I would say that Niles and uh, Tohi Jamo also step up to the VIP league as well. Jamie Tart has some really good things to do. I still don't think he's at VIP level, but maybe for season uh, three. But of course, the heart of the show is still Jason Sudeikis' Ted Lasso, who fittingly watches It's a Wonderful Life Alone on Christmas. There are Christmas episodes! Christmas in August, I love it. Or maybe it'll be September by the time those air. I was in a Ted Lasso season two, you know, swirl of fantasticness. So, I mean, they just all ran together for me as episodes. And it was great. But he really is a Jimmy Stewart type character. His Ted lasso -ems are as clever and as out of left field, yet totally on target as ever. And his ability to connect to other characters and therefore the audience is incredible. I also love how he continually demonstrates that kind does not mean stupid, which is tragically a mistake people often make. He is just fantastic. He is an extraordinary character. The role of Jason Sudeikis' career, who by the way, he's been kind of echoing in real life lately, and that's one of the reasons his recent interview trended. He had a wonderful quote about his um, divorce or breakup from Olivia Wilde. It was incredible. Uh, and, not, he, and Ted Lasso is not just an instant Hollywood classic character, but again, a symbol that men, modern men can evolve to keep up with society, yet still retain the elements that they're proud of. Ted Lasso shows that nice guys can finish first. And the, that lesson extends to the entire cast. Nice people can finish first. Again, Ted Lasso is a world that I, I think we all want to live in when, once we see it. And I think, it's, I think it's wonderful that the show illustrates that we can live in that world if we strive to be as kind and as positive and as optimistic and 
it is open to working together as the characters on the show. So that's my non-spoiler review of Ted Lasso season two, which starts up again this coming Friday, uh, July 23rd, and it runs for eight weeks. So get on the Ted Lasso train. I think this is gonna be even more special than season one. I really think you're not gonna wanna miss this. All right, so uh, share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.